Now let's see what happens when we initiate our breath. The first thing when we initiate our breath, we contract our diaphragm here. And the next thing will happen, our diaphragm will become flat. Instead of being like this, it will become flat like this. So, um, sorry, this will become flat like this. I'm just trying to, it will become flat like this. And the next thing also, when we initiate our breath, the intercostal muscle also get the chest wall to move anteriorly and upward. Both of these movement of the diaphragm downward and the chest wall upward and anteriorly will lead to one thing, which is increase in the chest cavity size. So this increase in size or volume happened at a constant temperature and constant amount of air. This will lead, as we just saw in Boyle's Law, to decrease in what we call intrathoracic pressure, which in turn, this decrease in intrathoracic pressure will reflect and lead to decrease in the intrapleural pressure. And this decrease in intrapleural pressure will lead to increase in what we call transpulmonary pressure, remember? Because the transpulmonary pressure is the pressure grade between the pressure in the alveolus and the intrapleural pressure. This is remained constant. This is decreased here. So the transpulmonary pressure increased. The next thing, because of the increase in transpulmonary pressure, remember this will lead to increased lung size or volume. That means the lung will inflate. It will become bigger. Remember, this, still there is no air flow. The next thing is when the lung become bigger, that means the alveolus becomes bigger with constant amount of air again applying balls low that will lead to decrease in alveolar pressure the next thing this pressure alveolar pressure will become sub atmospheric because when there is no flow, zero flow, the alveolar pressure normally is equal to the atmospheric pressure right here. Of course, here at the proximal airway, there is a atmospheric pressure. Now, decreasing the alveolar pressure to sub-atmospheric, and there is pressure here that's atmospheric pressure. Now we create a pressure gradient and the air start flowing in from the high pressure area to the low pressure area. And you can only guess that this airflow will continue as long as the pressure gradient is there. But as the air flow in, the alveolar pressure start to increase until the alveolar pressure equal to the subatmospheric pressure. When the pressure gradient disappear, the flow will cease then. And this is how spontaneous breathing happens.